Hello everyone and welcome to the After Hours Gaming League. I am your host for the match, Crick Chronic War Catalyst here. Uh, and those are not actually uh, all the bands that we had in the uh, lobby. We did remake the game uh, very quickly just to make sure that we had... Or we did do the pick ban, excuse me, in the lobby so we can actually get all these champions on the people they want because unfortunately we don't own all the champions but before I get into those details uh, let me introduce our two teams here on the blue side we have Microsoft Deconstructors of course Microsoft the company that made this lovely OS I'm running right now um, and they are playing for the charity Math Counts that is a charity that helps engage uh, middle school students of all ability and interest uh, levels in fun and challenging math programs uh, by bringing extracurricular opportunities uh, to students and uh, also uh, in addition to just doing uh, extracurricular things for the students they also try and bring uh, free high quality resources to the teachers themselves to educators to make sure uh, that math can be taught in the way that uh, people can enjoy it uh, as somebody who enjoys math quite a bit myself <laughs> um, I can appreciate that charity uh, and I think that getting um, people to not be afraid of math or hate math is a very worthy goal so great charity there and on the red side we do have the team Amazon Bonus uh, that is of course an Amazon team here Amazon the website that uh, helped me get this beautiful microphone you're hearing me through right now um, they are playing for the charity Child's Play Child's Play is a charity that brings children in hospitals and domestic abuse centers the joy of gaming you know it tries to help them recapture that spark of childhood where you can actually relax and enjoy yourself and excuse me you can actually try and be a kid and if you're uh, in a domestic abuse center um, or just in the hospital even you've probably gone through something fairly traumatic and uh, that charity works to try and bring those kids um, back to that uh, state of childhood to where they can really relax and enjoy things and uh, get the most out of their childhood while they have it so um, the magic of gaming is something we're all familiar with uh, and a great charity to try and bring that out to them so let's uh, actually get into the game here um, as we do have uh, the picks for these teams again these bands are different because scumbag teams are scumbag teams and not doing the same band so i can talk about it in uh the actual recording bang bang shots fired <laughs> um but there were um i am just a little bit disappointed uh because i did want to talk about some of those bands uh for those of you who watched the stream the live stream i did uh explain some of those bands earlier on i'm going to do my best to try and remember what those bands were um because there was a lot of targeted bands going back and forth uh, benefits of watching the live stream anyone who's watching the recorded version of this definitely check that out um, so you can get the full uh, commentary on all the picked bands uh, but overall here um, the main two bands uh, that I did want to comment was uh, there was a first ban on the blue side uh, for Vane which was a uh, targeted ban and then they replied with a targeted ban uh, of their own against the ADC by taking away Sivir um, so, uh, the red side took away server. So, very interesting back and forth of the bands. Um, the other two bands that did come out from the red side were all target bands, uh, at the jungler for this blue team. Uh, they were, were Vi and Fiddlesticks trying to, uh, hit that champ pool pretty hard. Um, but from what I've seen, uh, Amumu is certainly a champion, uh, that the blue side's jungler is familiar on. So, we will definitely be seeing... Um, some expert Amumu play, uh, I believe, coming out this game. Overall, uh, we do have pretty normal uh, summoners coming out here. Pantheon uh, in the top lane actually opting to go for that Ignite uh, as opposed to Garen taking the more traditional top lane Teleport. Um, gonna be looking for some early, early kill pressure with that. Pantheon definitely uh, can trade, especially with someone who's all about auto attacks um, as Garen is. Um, he's going to be blocking out quite a bit of damage there with his passive and should be able to trade very effectively early on. So look for a bloody top lane uh, with a Pantheon that's incentivized to trade here by that summoner spell uh, choice. But perhaps the most importantly uh, thing I want to say about this matchup is going to be uh, 
the wombo combo potential here coming out from the blue team. Um, taking away the Pantheon ultimate for a moment, which is always just a nice little extra sugar on top of any wombo combo. Um, if you get either a Lux Snare or an Amumu Bandage into a good Amumu ultimate, it's over. <laughs> it's going to be over. This blue team is going to be able to annihilate you. If, you. if any of those things can hit multiple people, even the Lux Q, if that can snare two people, that's going to allow follow-up to happen because Keely, all of the engage, uh, the really hard CC lockdown that the blue side has at their disposal, the Sona ultimate, the Amumu ultimate, um, those are going to be really strong follow-up engage. So all they need is one good thing to start off an engagement in their favor, and then it's going to be like a CC chain nightmare um, coming out of the blue side here. Um, and especially with the Lux ultimate, with the Jinx ultimate, they're going to be able to put in a lot of damage onto people who are CC'd uh, in a very still uh, state, uh, if not just outright rooted, <laughs> which is probably what's going to be the case here. Um, there's a little bit of slow potential coming out, but for the most part, it's going to be just really hard CC. So, what we're going to have to see from the red side is not necessarily uh, grouping together, but trying to have a more staggered stance themselves uh, when they're going to try and uh, set up for these team fights uh, that will be coming out here we're going to have to see them a bit more staggered apart than the normal setup because if if they get a little bit too close together, that AoE CC is going to just become a nightmare for them to deal with. So they're going to probably have to really get Graves, or excuse me, Graves, Garen way in the face of the blue side. Um, so he will at least dodge out some CC there as we actually see an invade here uh, from the Tribush. Amumu being spotted out here by the Garen. Garen thinking he's just going to chase him away. But this actually could be a first blood here. There's actually no CC uh, leveled for this team here. I'm un Unfortunately, yeah, uh, Tantrum being taken first by Amumu here. Uh, probably got that leveled in base. Uh, unfortunately, I mean, that's why if you're going to try some sort of invade like this, you definitely don't level up your abilities uh, until you know that the invade has ended and you weren't able to catch someone. If Lux could have had her Q leveled up or Amumu could have had his Q leveled up for uh, either the Lux binding or the Amumu bandage, uh, that definitely would have been first blood over to this blue team. So unfortunately, a missed opportunity for them there. But overall, it looks like we're going to have normal starts after that. Uh, Filthy little dirtying uh, possible first blood opportunity tease that we had there. Um, overall, we're going to have normal starts here. Uh, items coming out are normal for both sides. Janna opting to go with the coin instead of the spell thief's edge. A little bit more of a passive lane there. Um, not quite as aggressive, um, which probably is the best decision. Of course, Sona is going to be able to once she hits level 2, out sustain you for sure, um, if you're a Janna. But also that poke that she brings is filthy, filthy Sona poke. So, um, lots of damage there, and she's going to be able to um, bring some noise here. So, making her step forward like that uh, to get the poke is one of the benefits of going coin. As we see, Garen taking a lot of damage here. He did start cloth 5, though, so he'll probably be able to sustain through this with his passive um, and all those health pots. But yeah, as long as they're making Sona step forward to try and uh, get that harassment in, uh, one of these times Sona's going to be stepping a little bit too far forward and then she might take a lot of damage back. And the key with Sona is not necessarily trying to have a lot of uh, really good effective trades with her because she's just going to sustain right on up. It's going to be trying to burst her down largely uh, in just one trade. Actually, we see Lissandra taking the claw here, going very aggressive. Uh, getting that turret shot actually is going to make it so she doesn't trade uh, very effectively there. Going to be a fairly even trade overall in the mid lane. And Garen getting aggressive in the top lane himself uh, as he's chugging those health bots, trying to actually 
uh, bait some tra minion damage out of uh, the minions in the top lane to get Pantheon a little bit low to make that trade a little bit more even. Uh, as Pantheon is now out of uh, any sustain options, but Lissandra actually perfectly taking the claw outside of range of the turret this time. Um, still doesn't necessarily have the best trade. She's actually going to be forced off here. Going to have to farm from afar now uh, and try and avoid any of that Lux damage. Luckily for her, Lux is running low on mana. She does have that Doran's Ring um, start, so that will be some mana coming back, but I'm not sure it will be enough here. As we see, uh, all the buffs now being cleaned up here by Amumu. Uh, the last of the buffs going down, so we're going to start to see some ganking action. And there exactly is what I'm talking about. Sona is quite low right now. So what we need to see is this red side bottom lane get very aggressive right now. Even with that passive charged up for Sona. Uh, we definitely need to see them start getting in her face uh, because now is the time to trade with her. And actually, Lissandra taking quite a bit of damage there. Going to be able to just walk away from that, but very low now. Did have the J4 in tow, but unfortunately, uh, he was not able uh, to make anything happen there. And Garen, uh taking quite a bit of damage here. He's going to have to uh, chug through those health pots uh, as we see him begin to do so. He's going to have to keep those a chugging away if he wants to hang out in this lane and try and keep CSing uh, one for one with this uh, Pantheon but with the combo CC will that ignite be enough? Actually we see first blood in the mid lane Garen does go down we will replay that to see what happened there but it looks like Sona is actually going to be able to make it out just barely here in the bottom lane let's actually recap to see what happened in this mid lane for the solo kill first blood on this Lux here, is it going to be just stepping a little bit too far forward and being able to catch a binding? Oh, we're seeing this go around. No, we actually... Yes, actually, she was just a little bit too far forward and with the passive as well, with the uh, light mark on her, that will be First Blood going over to Lux, but also immediately followed up by that kill on the top lane and unfortunately for the red side, that uh, answer kill of the Sona in the bottom lane she gets out with just a sliver of health. It was uh, very close uh, there. I did not see the exact number there, but it was quite. She was quite low, probably within uh, 30 hit points overall. And that is certainly hard to do on a Sona. Um, we might see actually. No, they're just going to recall. Think better of that there, um, and not try and go in on the Garen here. But yeah, so overall that is two kills uh, unanswered to this blue side here uh, because of some, I don't want to say lucky, but some really uh, good plays here from the bottoms, bottom lane here. With that Jinx and Sona able to just barely get out of here. It did take uh, all the summoners except for that exhaust to do so though, so they're going to have to play a little bit more careful in this bottom lane, and we can see that reflected here uh, by this... Caitlyn uh, and Jana who are getting a little bit more aggressive now. But they do not have the ward coverage, so we see a little bit of hesitation coming out as they do spot out a Mumu with that pink ward. Uh, but after they do lose vision of him clearing this pink ward, uh, they're going to be largely in the dark. Again, I'm taking a look at the map. We do see absolute darkness for this bottom lane, so they're going to feel very uncomfortable. Mumu actually going to the middle lane here, trying to get a snowball going. Actually going to just throw down a pink ward for some vision in the jungle and think better of it. But now this has been warded. There is a ward thrown out in the bottom lane just in time. So Mumu uh, is going to actually be spot out here. But he he's still able to catch the Caitlyn, who is just way too far forward. And... Well, as we see the camera thinking this is the more important lane. Oh, and it was the Lux ultimate as soon as she uh, gets a little bit of distance. So much damage here. Let's actually jump back here as like Caitlyn did make it out with just a little bit of health. Let's watch this again. Lux did burn the flash and the heal just to make sure she was far enough away from that J4. Really smart play to use both of those summoners here. To make sure she was far enough back towards her turret to discourage J4 from trying to dive in. And once she had done so, and J4 had decided against uh, using that uh, EQ combo um, to try and make sure that he can uh, interrupt the channel from Lux, 
Well, there was nothing to interrupt the channel from Lux, and she was able to completely burst out that Lissandra. So now that is two kills on the Lux in the mid lane, which is resulting in quite an advantage. And after this Lux goes back after the Dragon here, I believe uh, we will see the items reflecting that. The Lux actually going to step a little bit forward. Actually, does end up binding the J4, who's able to flag and drag away just as the binding expires to make sure that Jinx zap does not hit him and we see the beautiful art uh for this a uh, fantastic firecracker jinx skin one of my favorites uh because jinx is the best anyways though <laughs> back to the action here uh j4 is a little bit spotted out on his jungle route here he's gonna be picking up that second blue buff for himself here feeling a little bit uh unsafe in the mid lane with that two kill advantage on the lux who does now uh have an entire item uh, like halfway point item uh, lead on to this Lissandra with that forbidden idol forbidden excuse me idol completed uh, and she was also able to pick up a couple of wards there so she's gonna be feeling a little bit safer in this mid lane J4 gonna have to try and clean out some wards um, but he is unfortunately able to do unable to do so right now and Pantheon actually going for some trades with Garen. Garen does now have a little bit uh, better defensive stats. Oh, and the <laughs> oh the duo kill! Oh my goodness! Let's one more time jump back. I usually don't jump back this frequently, but an insane duo kill. Pantheon able to just get that last spear going out right as Garen ulted him to death. So a duo kill in the top lane. Very, <laughs> very fun play there. Um, it did cost Pantheon his Ignite, uh, whereas Garen uh, did not have to burn any summoners for that. So that does not bode well for what the trades will be like in the future uh, when those summoners are actually traded equally here. Uh, if we can, if uh, Garen can manage to set up a situation where they will have equal summoners again, or perhaps a summoner spell advantage now that that Ignite will be down. Uh, but we see Lissandra looking to make a play here, but actually gonna have to claw away, taking a lot of damage. Oh, but the Sona ultimate does miss, and she flashes afterwards to do largely nothing except put a Q out. But then the ultimate from... Oh, the ultimate from Lux does not miss. The ultimate from Jinx does not miss. And that's exactly what I'm talking about earlier. Even with the uh, ultimate from Sona missing, to miss that initial CC... Just the Lux Q, just the Lux CC was plenty of uh, CC to create those chain ultimates and get two kills going over to this blue siding. Uh, J4 coming in, forcing that flash out of Jinx, a good cataclysm there, uh, but unfortunately not able to answer a kill, and all of a sudden this game has erupted into a 6-1 lead in favor of the blue side here as we see Pantheon getting aggressive again. Trying to trade with this Garen. Make use of that passive as much as possible. He does have a Brutalizer uh, and some uh, Lifesteal here from the Vamp Scepter already finished. Um, so he will be able to try and play a little bit of a sustain game with this Garen, though. That typically is not effective to play with Garen with his passive, but he's gonna uh, jump on back uh, and think about teleporting to this top lane here uh, once he has some time to heal on up purchase up that giant's belt and we do see he's gonna have a little bit of a delayed teleport back but he does not want to miss some of that CS so he will be uh, coming back and getting aggressive onto that Pantheon in the middle lane ooh Lux actually missing the snare there overall in the top lane uh, this Pantheon has created a lot of pressure and it's showing not just in that kill advantage but also in that CS lead. Uh, it's now extended to about 15 minions in the lead in favor of Pantheon. Um, but perhaps uh, more importantly is that Lissandra who has fallen very far behind um, not just in kills uh, but also in CS as well. About 20 uh, CS behind but then the Wombo Combo CC chain absolutely annihilating Lissandra. And every time that Lux cooldown, uh, which is, like, criminally short, comes up, uh, she's going to be using that uh, Q 
She's going to be using that ultimate, and if Mumu can provide a little bit of CC to make sure she lands that Q to start it off, well then that's what's going to be happening every time from now on. That's going to result in a kill for the Slux, who will start to become a monster now with those three kills. We can see the Mia pings being called out from this red side here. Lux has just gone B, but the fear of that roaming Lux, who's already proven herself quite the roaming threat uh, earlier this game when she showed up in that bottom lane and helped create that double kill. Um, or I should say those two kills. I believe they were split up amongst the champions, but Pantheon couldn't be stopped here. Damn, being a little bit annoying, not actually even getting any damage down off of that, but we'll delay the recall here. We gotta just keep our eyes peeled. There's gonna be actually no, the chompers are not going to land almost the CC, and again, even the Jinx has some lockdown CC uh, to snare people, so Kaylin. Just barely able to make it out of there. Good play by her. Um, but how one has to wonder how much longer she can continue to make those plays. And the Lissandra Claw uh, was down mid. Uh, but J4 looking to follow that up. Not going to be able to find anything. And Mumu still looking to follow that up in the bottom lane. But it looks like they'll be able to get away as J4 rotates down to this bottom lane. And trying to make something happen down here. And we do see the flag drag actually misses. Hits no one. Speaking all about this CC and red side actually missing their critical CC, I'm not sure how much it would have resulted in something, but definitely not giving that extra time for the Caitlyn to wail away is going to make them think twice about taking this engagement here, especially with that Amumu still lurking about. J4 is in the unwarded jungle, uh, and he will land the flag and drag this time, but immediately get followed up engaged on, and that is going to be the combo CC coming out. With the uh, Mumu ultimate finishing off J4, Sona just saving her own life barely there with her own ultimate. Going to make it out of there alive. And that will be yet another kill going over to this blue side here. And what looks to become an absolute snowball of a game. An 8-1 uh, lead right now. Um, overall, the, there is no CS lead either to fall back on for this red side. So... Right now, it's not too um, absolutely devastating of a lead. Hold on there. Wait. And... Oh, actually, great flash there from Lissandra. Hanging out just for a second to bait it out. And she actually dodges the Q. But she will eventually go down. And actually, um, that will be an extra assist going over for her skills of dodging out that Q uh, from Sona. So, well, great plays by that Lissandra there. Uh, dodging the Lux ultimate. Dodging... Uh, the Sona Q, it just was not enough. There was just too much catch potential on this blue team uh, to be allowed to exist. <laughs> um, Kaylin actually flashing and healing over. Let's try and get a view back down there. There's unfortunately no vision coming out for this Kaylin. So, not going to be able to use her ultimate to finish anybody off here. As you see Garen is ignited and the ultimate, no, not going to be enough. 10 hit points. Single digit hit points coming out for this Pantheon who's actually gonna hang around and just go through some uh, Health pots here the guts on this Pantheon to try and trade, but no Garen is able to get the spin off if only Pantheon had stunned him just a second sooner um, He wouldn't have been able to get that and Pantheon might have been able to get the kill there, but uh, Garen was able to start the spin to win right before Pantheon was able to stun him. So Pantheon essentially jumping to his death there, jumping into the Garen spin. Going to cost him his life there. So another kill going over to this uh, blue side. And again, like I was saying earlier, overall the gold does not seem like it's out of control here. But in this season, the gold leads are deceptively low for what we're used to. So this actual three uh, or two and a half K lead right now, uh, now nearly, actually that uh, shrunk up a little bit with that turret control, uh, with Garen taking that objective off of that kill he just got onto Pantheon. That might be the saving grace here, some of that global gold coming in to try and even up that gold lead. But again, 
Uh, actually, hold that thought as we do see J4 Lin landing the flagging drag and the cataclysm. He is within auto range to continue to auto Lux, but she doesn't care. She channels in his face and gets a double kill onto Lissandra in the background as well. Lissandra not able to get her ultimate onto the Lux to stop her before she can start getting that ultimate coming out. And that will be a double kill onto what is now an unstoppable Lux. Actually uh, gonna be cleaned up here in the bottom lane too. Great ultimate from Sona. Um, Janna almost saving uh, as we do see Dragon taking as well. So much action going on right now. Uh, Janna throwing out her ultimate just to try and give Caitlyn a little bit more sustain. A little bit more survivability forcing the flash here. But it's Garen. How long can you run from Garen? Oh, actually going to think better of it is Garen running a little bit too deep past the minion line. Uh, and did not have his ultimate up. So, going to give up that chase there. Um, as we do see, the turret's now evened up with that bot lane turret. But again, great play by the Janna there to try and use her ultimate to heal Caitlyn out of the range to die. But unfortunately, it was just one tick too slow. Um, so that will not be enough. Uh, to save her life and she will end up going down um but again now looking at the score 12 to 2 i there's not much to say about this game aside from that score line of course we do have uh garen trying to do what he can here in this jungle actually going to chase pantheon away forcing Mumu to take a lot of damage from that blue buff and he does have the ultimate up now so as soon as pantheon is in range he will instantly ultimate him and get that kill and trading very effectively with the Samumu. I'm not sure who's tankier in a 1v1. It would have been interesting, but this is not a 1v1 game. And another uh, participation in a kill going over to Lux here, who is, again, an absolute nightmare. 5 0 oh, 4. Lux is by far the person uh, you have to worry about in this game. Look for Lissandra to be locking her down every opportunity she gets, but. Uh, even if you do hold that thought, J4 missing the flag and drag, but does throw out the Cataclysm. The ultimate does come out from this Caitlyn Sandra ultimate on a squishy Sona. But even with all of that, there is nothing that comes out of this for the red side. Only a death of J4. All of that engage, all of those abilities dumped into the fight there. And that is a one for nothing in favor of the blue side. And now, dying <laughs> to the double kill soda. Let's look at, watch that one more time here. As we see, absolutely destroyed. We see the Pantheon ultimate start to come in. Sona, knowing it's going to come in, is going to flash ultimate and just barely on the edge catch uh, the Janna as well. Uh, so that will be with the final Q shot finishing off, finishing them off. That will be a double kill onto Sona. And now, what do you do in a game when you are in this situation? Uh, there's not really much to be done here. Uh, I all you can do is really turtle as hard as you can, and hopefully, if you can outlast the team, defend your turrets. Uh, and just hang out as long as possible, letting the CS come to you, leaving those global objectives. Um, as far as Dragon and Baron are concerned, just trying to leave those alone, sacrifice them for a little while, farm up, try and catch your CS up. Uh, that could be the way to get back in this. Really ward up your jungle, try and control your jungle here. As we look at uh, the map, we do see some wards starting to come out now. But largely for this red side, it is uh, almost entirely dark, whereas the blue side... Has the jungle lit up like a, like a light bright here. Uh, absolute vision on the map for this blue side. So they're going to be able to continue to get those picks. And that's absolutely what you have to deny if you're this red side here. You cannot allow any more picks to be coming out. Uh, and even being out here with that claw uh, is very dangerous for Lissandra. Uh, because she could have very easily... Uh, had an ultimate been available for her, had Pantheon been closer, uh, available for the Sona, I should say, um, she could have been lo locked down and then missed the chance to take her claw out, and then she would have been stuck there, so. As we do see the Skull Crab going down here to the blue side, um, we, we gotta start seeing a lot more careful play here. Um, perhaps Garen is the only one who can really afford to chance this out, as he is not behind... Uh, in the build, as he does have three kills to his name as well. 
Um, but overall, he still has to be a little careful uh, because everyone on this blue team has become an absolute nightmare. The only one uh, perhaps showing here as a possible weak, weak link could be the Pantheon, uh, but he has not been offering any chances to be caught out. So as long as he remains uh, playing, uh, not necessarily conservatively, but playing uh, safely, he'll be able to continue to hold this line, farm himself up, and make sure that he's alright, uh, and just use his ultimate to sort of follow up and engage on these teams. Actually, very good disengage from this whole team now. Uh, Janna does have that Talisman of Ascension built. That will be absolutely critical for this team uh, as they're going to need to reposition quite a bit and as the team fight engagements begin they're going to need to uh, get absolute domination from the positional advantages they can have otherwise they're just going to fail very hard in trades. Um, you see Garen actually getting locked down by the flame chompers not enough follow up so you see thing, blue team thinking better of it without the minion line there uh, a couple of turret shots being tanked here and there but overall not even worrying about it is this blue side uh, as they do have again if you try and focus down that monster Lux you have a monster Jinx behind her and even if you get both of them oh my goodness you gotta worry about the tank of Mumu's 3 0 and 2 so it's gonna be absolutely destructive oh we do see them all grouped up there's that chain CC it is on to Garen not the best target but Lux's ultimate does hit a number of people there are no more minions here so that will be the red side being able to disengage. Oh, the Lux Q just barely misses. That surely would have been an ultimate uh, taking down J4. Uh, had it not been bloody, body blocked there, but especially had that Q landed, he would have definitely been going down. And a good tornado there from Janna to try and fend them off of this turret, but it looks like they're actually just going to step forward and have Amumu tank up some of those shots. Actually, uh, Pantheon taking very low here. Uh, but it looks like they're not going to be able to get the Caitlyn ultimate out on him. Uh, probably just would have been blocked, but would have been good to get that uh, thrown out if they could have tried. Sona hanging around that uh, Pantheon just on the off chance that something uh, might be able to happen here. And Garen actually into the pit where the dragon is live. Going to start off this dragon here. Caitlyn very low. Need to be careful of this team. This could be a chance to press an advantage. Uh, but actually both those wards are taken out and J4 is actually gonna go straight in here with the cataclysm in after the flag and dragon That will be Lux going down. That's what you need to do to start this off Amumu is tanking some turret shots But here comes Pantheon from behind getting a little over aggressive are this uh, J4 and Garen as Caitlyn goes down in the background to that Pantheon Amumu now Garen and J4 are caught out on the wrong side of the map Pantheon actually going to flash forward to make sure he lands the stun onto the right target, that Lissandra, who does go down, but it looks like he'll be paying for it with his life as the return kill goes over to the red side, and now Amumu with no mana, no escapes, no hope of surviving. That is the shutdown, so critically aside from the Jinx, so, uh, all of the people who were going out of control did get killed there, so a lot of shutdown gold going over to this red side here and with the dragon being claimed for them as well as I do not think Sona will be able to contend with it neither will the Jinx no Jinx steals the dragon with her ultimate we gotta watch that again the smite was not up for this J4 so the Hail Mary ultimate gonna be coming out from Jinx J4 tried to position to stop it but that is enough damage to take it out so the dragon actually not going over to the blue side and that is the third dragon going over that is the third dragon going over to the blue side and the first dragon again denied from this red side so the critical dragons have now been sealed for this blue team and the critical dragons denied from this red team and that is gonna be a very large nail in the coffin it's certainly not an insurmountable lead right now but i was just about to say as they were taking that dragon if they take the dragon here uncontested uh this might be the way for the red side to get back into it but just as i say that the hail mary jinx ultimate gonna turn that right around and stop 
uh, take whatever Hope was starting to build uh, for this red team and smash it into the ground <laughs> with some nice fiery rockets. Uh, those beautiful visual effects uh, bringing tears of pain <laughs> to this red team. Uh, gonna face check into this uh, Pantheon, but not really care too much about it as he does have uh, quite a bit of health and armor now, so he should be able to fend off any Pantheon uh, encounters he does meet. Pantheon, of course, does have a little bit of armor penetration built, but with that Warmogs, uh, that will be a lot of health to overcome here uh, for the Pantheon. Actually, uh, Sona coming around trying to poke out what she can, keep that passive down uh, on the Garen, actually going to throw out uh, her uh, Queen's, uh, my, br my brain, Frost Queen's, um, to try and slow that Garen, but actually it does not land it on him. Mumu hanging out patiently in this bush here, seeing if he can get a little bit more forward. If Caitlyn comes to try and contest something, he might be able to get something uh, started in this bottom lane, where there is a Death Brush in the top lane, but they do have it pinged out. So we're going to look to this bottom lane where J4 does think that this is just Jinx and they're actually going to be able to catch out that Caitlyn and with that, that will be Caitlyn going down though J4 able to burst down that Jinx right after so good for the J4 there actually able to uh, get that damage he needed on the Jinx to make that a one for one trade and Garen is left alone in this middle lane right now. He does have a minion wave coming with him so he might be able to get this turret and Mumu trying to stop it as we do see this action in the top lane. Garen gonna just ignore this Amumu as much as possible, even throwing the Q down, but unfortunately he does draw the turret aggro uh, from his Sunfire Cape, so he will be forced away, and that is the top lane turret going down for this blue side here. Um, J4 able to take out a turret, uh, the outer turret in the bottom lane while all this is happening, so the turret's not getting quite insane. Oh, the flash from Lissandra! Just a second too late to prevent the stun, but we'll get her enough dam distance to not die from the damage. And with four members up here, that looks like Lux actually does land her ultimate on Lissandra, though, from afar. So that will be Lissandra going down in a one for one. Now a one for two with Pantheon dying to this red side as well. And Lux not going to be able to get away. Sona has the speed boost. So does Garen. What will happen here? No, with the Talisman Ascension pop, but the Frost Queen's claim answer, and the speed buff of her own, and the exhaust coming out, with those Moby Boots kicking in right now. No, they will not be enough. Almost out of range of the Flag and Drag, but that will be Sona going down. So a very extended trade that does wind up going in this red side's favor, and again, as we see Garen teleporting, teleporting over to this middle lane here, uh, to clean up that CS is going to uh, even up this uh, game a little bit closer. Uh, each time I feel like the game's starting to spiral out of control in favor of the blue team, the red side is able to make really important plays to continue to bring themselves back into this. So the gold lead overall right now actually getting caught in the flame chompers. Oh no, they walked right into it. And here comes the nightmare chain CC while taking turret shots. And the Jinx ultimate actually hits four people and does manage to execute the J4. Now Lissandra gonna ultimate herself to only delay the inevitable though as she does go down. And that is a two for nothing, a two for getting confident there in their abilities to turn this around from that disadvantage and they paid for it dearly here with what could result in a, a base turret going down here uh, this inhibitor turret's gonna be taking quite a bit of damage they do step forward to clear out the minions to try and delay this as long as possible everyone stepping forward for half a second to take some turret laser not really the best uh, strategy there but doing what they can to try and create the pressure while those death timers are up and all five of them are here now but all five of the red team has respawned and returned to this turret and J4 actually gonna flag and drag right in Pantheon stepping forward gonna be taking a lot of damage from Garen and Caitlyn just barely able to E out of the way we gotta watch for the Jinx ultimate is what this red side is thinking unfortunately for the blue side that Jinx ultimate is down so those three members taken oh so low 
are actually going to be able to walk away with their lives. And that is a successful defense of the inhibitor turret in the mid lane. But unfortunately for the red side, as you do see them pinging out on the map, they know that the dragon is up. The dragon has spawned. This will be the fourth dragon for the blue side as red will not be able to get here in time to contest. And in fact, if they funnel in one at a time, they might give up some further kills here. No, Great Cataclysm actually does catch out the Amumu, who will go down. Actually sniped out is Lissandra. They grouped too closely on the Amumu, especially the ranged Lissandra with the spell damage. Did not need to pile on that close. So that will be a kill only resulting in a one for one. All these trades, all these great engages only result in even trades for the blue side. And the snipe coming out will be enough damage for Lux. But again, J4 so far forward to try and create that play ends up dying himself. So that is a one for one again. And now we see Jinx absolutely going insane with that attack speed. Going to be able to solo out. Uh, with the help from Sona, that, uh, Caitlyn, and, uh, excuse me, Garen, just so far forward, uh, in the enemy jungle, not able to get through all of this CC, and that will be him going down as well. Unfortunately, Janna not able to get close enough to get that tornado going out to save him in time. Oh, beautiful crit there onto those minions. Um, that always feels nice as a jinx. Um, but yeah, absolutely uh, destructive play here. And each time again, uh, these last two team fights, the red side has just gotten a little headstrong, seeing how they've been able to turn this around and get favorable exchanges despite being so far behind. I think that got in their heads a little bit, and these last two exchanges might be what puts it away for the blue side here. Uh, the comeback might have just become a little bit out of reach. With four dragons to nothing in favor of the blue side. With now the Baron on the blue side. With a 10k, nearly 10k lead in gold overall. You just gotta wonder, what can this blue side do to try and come back from this? Or excuse me, what can the red side do to try and come back from this? And we continue to see the engagements coming out from the red side, but... Absolutely, oh goodness, almost annihilated was Caitlyn. She was just barely able to sidestep the Lux ultimate there. Great awareness from Caitlyn uh, to know to sidestep that as soon as she saw the tracker start to come out on the laser. But yeah, we gotta, I mean, trading just does not seem like it's the most effective strategy. With the Lissandra, with the J4, you do have a lot of pick potential. So as painful as it is to try and wait out a situation like this, the objectives are down. The objective situation can almost not get worse for this red side right now, as long as they can turtle uh, and hold their inner turrets. But hold on, because that's the engagement, and that's the triple targeted Lux ultimate going to be taking out Alessandra. And with that, this might mean the base is going down. J4 trying to fend people off. Pantheon stepping a little bit too far forward, taking some damage, actually caught in the ca Cataclysm, and gonna go down, yes, no, just barely not going down, double digit hit points on that uh, Lux, who did not end up dying, good play from J4 to try and trap them within turret range in the Cataclysm, but unfortunately, just too far forward, could not even do that without giving up his life for free. And that is going to now result in two inhibitors down, the top and middle inhibitors, going over to this blue side. And now the base has officially been cracked. And with Pantheon rotating down to that bottom lane, that will be the last inner turret going down uh, as well. Though he does actually take the aggro, so he might be forced away here, and that might give Garen enough time to clear out that giant minion wave, which he will do, and actually save that. And Mumu uh, taking a lot of the jungle here before he uh, goes B. Great counter jungling there to know he has those wards down, he has the vision he needs, um, and it is in fact safe uh, to take as much of that jungle as possible, especially uh, the very critical Razor Beaks, um, who will, uh, in effect, 
be additional vision going over to this blue side as uh, Mumu was able to deny that from this red team here. So that vision control will continue to grow as we do see uh, the red side's jungle is largely dark, whereas the blue side has lit it up uh, very strongly here. And with a minute until that bear or until that dragon comes up, with the insane fifth dragon buff on the board. And two inhibitors down for the red side. Actually, uh, Sona missing that ultimate there. Great E from Caitlyn to E out at an angle to make sure Sona uh, misplaces that ultimate there. Fantastic play from the Caitlyn. Um, and J4 actually going really aggressive here. They know if they wait, this is going to be a fifth dragon and it's going to be the game. So the only hope is to fight right now. J4 actually able to flag and drag away. Gonna keep his life for now. But that is the three of these blue team members chasing around. Actually, Lissandra is Lux. And that will be the uh, Garen eventually going down. Great Zonia's there. Um, actually going to dodge out the ultimate is Lissandra, but it might not matter as we see here in the Nexus turrets. A lot of damage coming out from just these minions. Oh, actually almost dead is J4, just barely able to make it out with his life. Going to dive back in before he can heal though. Actually does get the kill onto Pantheon, but in the meantime that one Nexus turret has gone down. Jinx, the turret destroyer, annihilating them, taking out these minions. Putting that damage, toggling it out, and that is the last Nexus turret going down. J4 fully healed up, diving in, trying to prevent any damage he can. And that will be the Lux, landing a beautiful ultimate to finish this out. That is a triple kill, a quadra kill, right before the end of the game. Going over to the Lux for the final ace that gets them the Nexus. A bloody game. Oh, from both sides here. Really hard fought from the red team. Definitely had some moments of life in them when they ne nearly just came back. Um, but unfortunately, just a couple of team fights towards the end there. Um, getting a little bit over aggressive. Gonna cost them the game here. And again, the story of the game is that 13, 3, and 8 Lux. Absolute monster this game. Did not even have her Zonia's completed. And she was able to continue to blow people up that hard. Because she's so far ranged that... I mean, she didn't even need the Zonia's to dodge out any damage. Lissandra needed to be getting in there. Uh, locking down that Lux. Throwing down the Zonia's herself and allowing Lux to get blown up. But she simply didn't have the chance to. Every time we saw Lissandra go in, it ended up being too aggressive of a move. And she ended up paying for it with her life. And that is, as one of the primary engages for the team, uh, why you see that Lissandra sitting at a 1-12-4. and four Because I, she kept trying again and again to do her best to create the plays for her team. But she just was not able to. And as we look over at the total damage for the team, that Lux and that Jinx with disgusting amount of damage dealt to champions almost more than uh, <clears throat> any two players uh, on this uh, red side team combined absurd damage numbers even Sona beating out the uh, jungler uh, for this uh, and devastating Lissandra who again was just held down so hard in this game she was absolutely made a non-factor by this blue team which is exactly what you have to do with Lissandra. She, despite being used uh, in the current meta as an engage tool, as a frontliner, she actually is squishy to no end. So if she is not able to throw down her ultimate on herself, if she is not able to zone yet, she's going to result in a score like this where she is 1, 2, and 4, or 1, 12, and 4. Um, and the early putting her behind uh, to make sure that Lux was able to just... 100-0 her with her uh, combo whenever she would land the Q. I mean, this is what it results in. An absolute runaway of a game. Uh, and certainly not to downplay the Jinx, who did go quite insane herself. 8-2-9. and nine. Again, we saw in the damage total, she actually was the highest damage in the game. Definitely was putting out lots of damage on targets in those team fights. Um, so that will be the game going over to Microsoft Deconstructors. Um, and apologies for in the previous video, I did misstate that for anyone who watched that and this one. Microsoft won, was the game, uh, was the winner of the previous game 
uh, I cast it on this channel. So a clean sweep for Microsoft uh, on the games I've casted at least today uh, over this Amazon bonus team. Uh, so if you did enjoy this game, it, we will have more games next week uh, as we enter the seventh week of the After Hours Gaming League's 2015 season. Thank you all for joining me. If you want to see the schedule coming up, feel free to vi visit the After Hours Gaming League website where the schedule will be posted. These videos will be uploaded there. And of course, these videos will always be uploaded on my channel and streamed live there going forward as well. So thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed the games today.